got off a client call. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make myself some breakfast because I'm starving. This isn't gonna be a full day of eating or anything, but I will have one coming soon. It's either gonna go up before or after this video, I'm not sure yet. But I'm gonna have some avocado toast because that's been a staple in my diet. So I wanted to do a grocery haul because I went grocery shopping last night and I thought that'd be a cool thing to throw into the vlog because I get a lot of questions about food that I eat. So I am currently back to tracking. I'm not gonna talk too much about that in this video because I'm gonna have a whole entire full day of eating where I kind of talk about macros and all that jazz. So just stay tuned for that. I also do have a video on how to track your macros. I'll have a card on the screen if you do wanna check it out. It's pretty simple. Um, I know it's a lot of numbers, but it's literally just a math problem, so I promise it's not as difficult as you think, and I think I did a pretty good job explaining that, so check that out if you want to. But I'm just going to show you guys what I tend to eat on a weekly basis. Obviously, there's stuff here that I don't have every single week, and then there's stuff that I have every single week that I already have, like eggs, rice, bread, the normal stuff. So the first thing that I got were some falafel balls so these are completely vegan um i go through phases of eating stuff so i just ate the same stuff for like a good two months and i finally got sick of it so now i'm kind of like picking up newer things or older things i used to eat so i really really like these they're just made of chickpeas i actually don't like chickpeas like on their own but i like them when they're like a hummus or in falafel so it's 150 calories and the macros are seven fat, 18 carb, five protein per three pieces. And that is how big they are. So got those really, really good frozen foods. They got this new mac and chow. So I get all my groceries from Walmart because it's super cheap. And our Walmart is really, really good about having plant-based, vegan and vegetarian options. I'm pescatarian but I'm also lactose intolerant, so I can't have dairy. Like I am actually allergic. We've reached a point in which like I just cannot have it anymore. Um, and then obviously I don't eat meat, but these are the best cheese replacements I've found. So the field roast chow slices are delicious and that's how they made this mac and cheese. So this one actually is new and it has the field burger chili sauce in it. Um, so I thought I'd try this one out and then this one's really good. I have this one all the time. So it's 210 calories per serving. So 420 calories is 17 fat, 60 carb, 8 protein in this one little box. And then this one is actually 470. So it is 21 fat, 56 carb, 15 protein. So these are really good sources for just good old high nutrient dense macros. And then I really like the Morningstar fake corn dogs. Um, these taste exactly like regular corn dogs. I ate meat for like 17 years, so I know what it tastes like. Um, and it literally tastes exactly the same. It's so weird. This is 2.5 fat, 26 carb, and 8 protein per one little corn dog. And I think you get four of them in here. So these are also a little bit more on the expensive side, but they're kind of like a specialty meal. And I don't really do a lot of frozen dinners because I, there really aren't that many options. So I'll get like maybe three a week and these will last me like two or three weeks because I don't really eat them that much. I picked up some Monsters because you guys know I like energy drinks. Mondays are actually my hardest day of training because I'm doing super heavy squats and deadlifts. So I'm gonna have a monster today. I'm also super tired. I picked up just this value pack of oatmeal because oatmeal is another great way to get your calories in. So this one has apples and cinnamon, maple brown sugar, and then cinnamon and spice. These are like my three favorite flavors. So I love getting this. Um, and the calories for these, are all 160. Um, the fat ranges, it's mostly like two or two and a half grams of fat per packet, 33 or 32 grams of carbs, and then four grams of protein. So I think people forget that protein's in everything. People are always like, how do you get protein when you don't eat meat? It's like there's literally four grams of protein in oatmeal, which is such a simple thing. So it really does start adding up. I picked up gum because I used to chew gum a lot when I was working out at Towson and it helps me stay focused for some reason. Um, gum also suppresses your appetite, so be careful with that. 
but I do really like that. And then I picked up peanut butter and jelly, so I picked up the Welch's Concord jelly because I'm gonna start making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches again because it's a great way to get a bucket load of calories in because there's so much in a tablespoon of peanut butter. So this is 180 calories per two tablespoons, which is 15 fat, eight carb, and seven protein. So this is a great way to get in some healthy fats and also some protein. And then this jam is pretty low in sugar. It's 10 grams of sugar per tablespoon. Um, and it's 40 calories and there's 10 carbs. So this doesn't have that much in it I try and get jams that don't really have like 15 ingredients because it's kind of unnecessary And there's no high fructose corn syrup, which is what you should really worry about when it comes to jam These are two examples of like random stuff that I don't usually get so my brother and I are gonna have tacos this week so we picked up these stand and stuff taco kits and then we also got the mild Taco Bell sauce because this stuff is the best. I don't know why my camera's not focusing today. I haven't really had enough of it. Um, I picked up my avocados. I already had one today. Um, and then I have just an extra one because all of them were rock hard. So these tend to be the softer ones for whatever reason. I think it's when they get their shipments in. So three avocados. I did have four. I picked up granola. I used to eat granola a lot when I lived in Towson, Donnybrook my junior year I think it was um but I stopped for a little bit so I got this protein packed granola this is the cranberry almond and it has six fat 31 carb and 10 grams of protein for half a cup which is not that much granola so I thought that was gonna be an awesome way to get some protein in because I'm not a huge fan of protein shakes they're so gross um what else oh yeah and then i got some cereal so really on a lucky charms kick right now so picked this up for three fourths a cup it's 110 calories one fat 22 carb two protein and i usually have two cups of cereal like every single day because i love cereal so we've got a big little big little that made no sense got a big gnc haul here today because they didn't have the full boxes of Lenny and Larry's cookies, so I had to buy them individually. <laughs> Luckily, there was like kind of a deal, so I got five of them for $8, which is still pretty good. Um, so, first thing I got was to get myself to $30 <laughs> because I was like, I don't know what else to get. So, I don't even know what these are. Smart Sweets Gummy Bears, three grams of sugar per pack. Um, per bag, it's 90 calories, zero fat, 33 carb, three protein. Um, they're dairy, soy, and lactose free, peanut and tree nut free. These do have gelatin, which I do tend to avoid, but it's fine. Um, and then I got some L glutamine because I actually ran out of this ages ago. You guys might have remembered me using this. So the only supplements that I ever really used for the most part were creatine and, um, L-glutamine as well as like a protein powder every now and then so L-glutamine is the only ingredient in here that is my biggest tip for buying supplements if you can buy them from brands where like they only have one ingredient in it and there's not a bunch of fillers and then I picked up a bunch of protein cookies so these are my favorites so I'll have one of these for my workout today this is the Lenny and Larry's um, white chocolate raspberry this one has the best macros sorry the lighting's really bad this one has the best macros that i've found um so far in the lenny and larry's so for half a cookie it's eight fat 33 carb and eight protein so this one has 460 calories for the whole cookie i picked up one snickerdoodle the macros for half are seven fat 29 carb eight protein picked up one of the lemon poppy seed if you like lemon flavored stuff and you like poppy seeds this is really really good uh seven fat 31 carb eight protein um and then i picked up a peanut butter one so this one has the most fat obviously because peanut butter so this has 10 fat 30 carb eight protein i actually picked up two um snickerdoodle ones so now we are going to go ahead and head to the gym this workout is going to be pretty difficult because i am squatting I haven't shown you guys my Mondays yet. They are my heaviest um, and also hardest for me personally day for lifting because I've got pretty heavy squats, bench. Um, they both have 
working sets as well as back off sets. The back off sets really kill me. And then I also have stiff leg deadlifts and side planks. So my percentages this week are still pretty high. The first three weeks have been really, really high. And that's going to kind of taper off and then go back up once I get closer to my week to my week <laughs> to my meat so i am on week three day one so for squats i'm working with 85 percent for my working sets 75 percent for my back off sets 85 set 85 percent for my bench working sets 75 percent for the back offs um and then i just have stiff leg deadlifts at eight rpe and then i also have those side planks i'm probably just going to do regular planks um for four sets for 45 seconds, which isn't horrible. So I get so many questions about what weight should I use? How heavy should I be lifting? Um, can I lift heavy? Like I'm really thin. Should I be lifting heavy? I'm, um, I weigh more. Should I be lifting heavy? Anyone can, anyone, everyone, everyone should be lifting heavy. Heavy is a relative term, so it's going to be a little different for you than it is for me. Like when I first started lifting two and a half pounds for bicep curls, that was heavy. But now I can easily do 25s for curls literally for days. So you build up your strength over time by working with progressive overload. So that is the best way to kind of approach how heavy you should be lifting. Because I know a lot of people are just like lift heavy or use heavy weight and people are like I don't know what that means <laughs> so it's obviously going to be different for everyone but a good rule of thumb that I always teach everyone is that the weight that is heavy for you should be difficult for those last two to three reps I'm supposed to be doing 90 for sets of three for bench but it is just not happening I don't know why but I feel so heavy and that's also going to depend on how many sets you're doing so if you're doing a lot of volume that week you've got like four sets of eight they should be getting difficult at the fifth rep and those sets that keep going the later sets those should be really really hard so if it feels impossible and it feels like you're going to failure or you're not even reaching that then you need to drop the weight but if you're doing it with ease and you get to the fourth set and you are just now getting tired, then you need to move up in weight. So really, most of your sets should feel pretty great until the very end. And then as you go up in sets, you should feel more and more fatigued because obviously your muscles are getting tired. So keep that in mind. That's kind of the way that I think is the best way to go about trying to figure out how much you should be lifting. And then for myself, since I follow powerlifting, everything's kind of percentage based. So for the most part, I'm lifting between 65 and 75%, um, sometimes 80%, but I don't usually pass that. So I'm working higher than that right now because I'm kind of in like the intensity block of my programming, but it's going to taper down and I'm going to be working with anywhere from like 68 to 78%. I'm pretty sure I'm programmed. I've only kind of looked through the program. I'll link it down below if you guys are interested in what I'm actually using, but um, those are my percentage ranges. So for the average person, between 65% and 75% is where most of your lifts should be the majority of the time because it's enough to put enough stress on your muscle. It's enough to gain strength over time, but it's also not too much where like the fatigue is, it's like overwhelming. So um, just keep that in mind, try those things out. If you have any questions about that, then leave a comment down below, but that'll wrap up this vlog.